These are 20 lessons from Robert Kiyosaki that completely changed my life and hopefully they can change yours too. Grow your spirit. So I've been pretty frugal over most of my life. And honestly, it, it served me pretty well. But Robert talks about growing your spirit and not cutting your dreams. So a lot of us have dreams. Maybe it's to travel or be a writer, have a nice house, have free time. For some of us, it's, it's just to have nice coffee. But a lot of times we decide in our head that that's for other people. It's not something that we can have. And we actually kind of give up on our dreams. But instead of giving up and saying we can't afford it, he talks about asking, how can I afford it? So maybe if you wanna travel, it's finding a way to work remotely, or maybe if you want a nice house or a nice car, finding different streams of income that will cover that monthly expense. The rich don't spend hours every day just messing around on their phone, watching TV, thinking about what they don't have, but instead they focus on learning, on growth, on growing their business, on actually taking actions on things that lead to success and not just thinking about it. While hope drains energy, action creates success. Instead, focus on the actions that will lead to that outcome, the habits, the little things that you do every single day. Like winners and losers have the exact same goals, it's the actions that are the difference. For instance, I, I used to hope to get a Tesla someday, but instead of just hoping for it, I actually put it in my control by making it uh, a goal that once I hit half a million subscribers, I can then get a Tesla, so don't forget to subscribe. But that makes it an actionable thing where every single day I know what will get me closer to that goal, and that is taking action, it's doing the things every single day for years and years and years. That's what's gonna make the difference. The best knowledge comes from personal experience. According to Robert, experience is the best investment you can make. And I've definitely seen this in my own life. Like you can watch all the videos on the world uh, on finances, but if you don't actually take action, you're not going to achieve anything. Like for me, by starting this channel, it was doing things that actually led to growth. Like you can watch a YouTube video on, on how to make YouTube videos or how to edit or whatever you're, or how to garden or play guitar or whatever you're into. But unless you actually go out there and you do it and you make mistakes and you learn from those mistakes, you're never actually going to progress. So you actually have to go out there, you have to fail, you have to try other things, fail at those and learn. And that is gonna be the quickest way to progress in your life. The cash flow quadrant. For me, this really changed how I thought about working in general. Here's the cash flow quadrant. Pretty much there are four different quadrants where most people earn their money. There's the employee, self-employed, business owner, or investor. When you're an employee, you trade your time for money. That's not something you wanna do for the rest of your life. If you're self-employed, most people think that's a step up, but for the most part, it's still gonna be trading time for money and you have to do some type of active work in order to keep your business running. What I've been focusing on doing for the past couple of years is moving from the employee to self-employed and moving over to business owner and investor. When you're a business owner, you have employees and when they work, you earn money. So you don't actually have to trade your time, you trade somebody else's time, you leverage your time. And when you're an investor, your money actually makes more money. So if you're on the left, you, you wanna move over to the right because it makes life a, a lot easier. Change your core. One of the main things I struggled with and, and a lot of people struggle with is they don't change their internal course. So like the fear of losing money and investing is greater than the reward of actually making money, starting a business, sticking your neck out there, taking a risk in order to gain that reward. It's a lot safer and more comfortable for most people to just stay inside their box. A lot of times we make most of our financial decisions based on emotion, but we wanna really take a step back, especially in our finances from emotion and really focus on on logic by learning a bunch of things through watching videos, taking courses, reading books, and changing my internal core is really what gave me uh, the confidence to actually start investing in the stock market and move out of what I knew, which was real estate, and really moved into starting a business and, and investing in the stock market. The app I use for that is Webull. If you guys wanna check them out, you can get 12 free stocks just for signing up and funding an account. It's absolutely free money. So if you guys wanna start investing, you can use the link down in the description. Learn to manage risk. Like we just talked about, there is some risk in, in every form of investing, but you can manage that risk and you can lower it a ton by raising your financial IQ. So if you're worried about investing, read a lot about it, but then actually go out and do it with a small amount so you can actually learn. He really talks about how your financial IQ is the most important thing. And this isn't something that you gain and you grow from going to college. It's what you gain and grow from talking to people who have done that and actually going there and doing it yourself. It's your fault if you die poor. This one changed my life so much and just how I think about 
so many different things really, that a lot of people wanna blame everything else under the sun for their situation. It's not your fault if you're born into a poor family or you live in a poor country or you have health problems. Whatever it is under the sun, it, that might not be your fault, but it is your fault if you don't do anything to get out of that situation. So it's not your fault if you're born poor, it is your fault if you die poor. It is due to your financial decisions. So this really helps me not blame everybody else for my problems, but take control over my own life, do the scary thing, and I can't blame anybody else for my problem. Success in school means almost nothing. He really talks about how he was uh, a, a not great student and how really C students can end up being really successful and that like how you do in school doesn't really matter. And that was really encouraging for me when I didn't finish high school and I didn't go to college because I'm like such a horrible student, but I am a good learner and learning is super important. Raising your financial IQ, super important. But what they teach in school and, and whether you were good at that or not, it has almost nothing to do with how successful you will be monetarily in your life. Don't be afraid of debt. A lot of us have this fear of debt and that is because it is a crippling thing if you have the wrong type of debt. And I've worked very hard to avoid any type of bad consumer debt, like credit card debt, but it can be a super powerful thing. He talks about how you can invest in real estate with none of your own money. You put in your own sweat equity and you can partner with somebody and buy a property, or you can use a very low percentage down loan like I've done, like 3% or for some people 0% and you get this property and you fix it up and it becomes worth more in the future. And you can do that if you paid cash for it. He really talks about how rich people use debt to their advantage to make them an insane amount of money and how poor people have the wrong type of debt and that costs them money. So how you use debt will drastically change your life. How the rich spend their money. Poor people spend their money and then they invest whatever is left. Whereas rich people invest their money and then spend what's left. It's this idea of paying yourself first. Speaking from experience, this can be uh, a very scary thing, especially when you're not making a lot of money but it's super important to prioritize investing in yourself, whether that's investing in your mind or buying your first property or starting your first business or investing in the stock market, whatever it is, pay yourself first, focus on your own business first before paying all your bills and you'll figure out a way to live off the rest. But if you always just invest whatever's left, you're, you're normally not gonna have anything left. On a similar note, you're only poor if you actually give up. The most important thing is that you did something. If you realize that you're the problem, then you can change yourself. But if you blame everybody else, then you're always gonna have problems because you can't change anybody else. You can't change anybody else's mind. You definitely can't change everything about them, even though a lot of us think we can. But when you actually take kind of extreme ownership and you realize it's not your boss that's the problem, it's not other people around you that's the problem, it's not your, your mistakes that you've made in the past that's the problem, it is you, that is something that you can change. You can change how you interact with the world, can't really change how it interacts with you. So only focus on yourself and what you can control. Mo money will not solve your problems. How he really talks about how having a high financial IQ is really the only thing. It's more important than having a bunch of money. Like there are plenty of lottery winners who have all kinds of money, but because they don't have a high financial IQ, they don't know what to do with that money. Like it's just gone like crazy. This happens to athletes, happens to a ton of different people. So it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. How to buy a new car. So Robert talks about how when he wanted to buy a new uh, Porsche or whatever he's into, I think it's Porsches, uh, how instead of actually buying a Porsche for maybe let's say 50,000, whether that's the down payment or how much a Porsche costs, I have no idea how much a Porsche costs. He would take that money and instead buy a rental property and with the income from that rental property, he would take that and have that be his monthly payment for that car. So if he wants something, if you want anything in your life, whether that's to travel, a new house, a new car, instead of saving up money, Money and then going and buying that thing, try to look at it as a monthly payment and build up an income stream to pay for that indefinitely. And once that's paid off, you'll still have that income stream. So it's just a really fun way of looking at something that you want that you really can't afford right now and asking how can you afford it and then making a change in your life to actually have that thing that you don't even think that you can have. He also talks a lot about cash flow. Cash flow is just all your income minus all your expenses. What's left over, that's kind of, and you wanna make sure that you have a positive cash flow. Like he talks about if you buy, let's say, a rental property and it costs $1,000 a month, 
and the rent is $999 a month, then you have negative cash flow. You have to continually put more into that in order to hang on to it. So for a lot of people, they might think their house is their biggest uh, investment, but it's actually a, a negative in their cash flow statement. So he doesn't look at it as an investment until you actually physically sell it and then you make that money. But every single month, it's taking money out of your pocket. But even if you're not making a lot of money and you have a rental or a business or whatever it is that's making $100 a month after all expenses, you can own an infinity amount of those. So you only need to make a little bit every month to make it a positive thing. So really look at cash flow in your life, even if it's a small amount, and just keep building different streams of income. Robert's definition of wealth. Most people look at wealth as big houses, big cars when you think of wealth, but he talks about how it's your ability to survive X amount of days without working. So if your expenses are 10,000 a month and you earn 10,000 a month, then you, you can't really survive even a month and you don't have any money in the bank. You might be earning 100K plus a year, but your wealth is actually like nothing because you can't survive without trading your time for money. But if your expenses are $5,000 a month and you have 50 grand in the bank and you're earning $10,000 a month and then you leave your job, well, now you have 10 months worth of wealth because you can survive not working for 10 months. Or if you have a couple different side streams of income that are earning you a few thousand dollars a month, now your wealth might move up to a year or two years or three years because you have those little streams of income that make your expenses lower. So wealth is not just really high income, big house, big cars. It's your ability to survive, which let's be honest, that's really the dream. If you enjoyed this video, check out Webull, link down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe because I really want a Tesla, but the only way I get to get it is if I keep making videos, which honestly is just so fun. I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you next week.